In this short lecture, I will go over some of the main ways in which business writing is similar to and different from other types of writing with which you may be familiar. When I talk about other writing, I'm referring to the kind of writing you normally do in college, frequently called academic writing. Other kinds of writing are, for example, journalistic writing, such as writing for a newspaper or for other media, or literary writing, in which your aim is to tell a story. This lecture is based, in part, on chapter 2 in your textbook, pages 7 to 35. Let's begin by looking at ways in which business writing is similar to most other types of writing. Since you're an international student, I'm sure you've noticed by now that the organization of a piece of writing varies from one culture to another. What is clear in one culture isn't necessarily clear in another. So let's consider what this clarity of organization means in an American business context. Just as you have learned to organize your academic essays into an introduction, a body, and a conclusion, you need to organize your business writing. However, the ideal business organization is short and to the point. Instead of an introduction, you put your main point, your thesis statement, right at the beginning of your document. You follow this with the reasons for that point, mostly using numbers and statistics, and you conclude with a brief summary of those points. That's it. It should be easy, shouldn't it? While it is true that much academic writing uses the passive, it's generally considered to be better to use active voice. This is doubly true for business writing. Saying, the forecast was not met, instead of, my department didn't meet the forecast, is often seen as trying to hide the truth. Use short, plain sentences in your business writing. There is a lot of jargon and specialized vocabulary and phrases in business communication, such as words and phrases that are most commonly used in speaking. For example, in daily spoken language in a corporation, a lot of people use sports metaphors, often from football or baseball. Those statements are often difficult for international students to understand. In week six, we will practice some of these metaphors. However, in most business writing, we should not use these kinds of vague expressions. It's more important than ever in your business writing to be 100% correct in spelling, grammar, and punctuation. Most business people, like this one, are reading documents and emails under time pressure, and they have little patience with errors that make the writer's intention hard to understand. Spell checker helps some, but it has limitation. If you're writing an important business document, ask someone to proofread it before you send it. While most of these recommendations are equally true for any kind of writing, a few that I will touch on next are more important in a business context than in an academic setting. I will mention four points. In business writing, it is important to quantify what you want to express. One way is to use numbers, such as dollar amounts, percentage increase or decrease, or ratios. For example, saying, our sales increased by 15% over last year is much more convincing than saying our sales increased considerably. Note on this slide a few possibilities of being precise. Talking about the importance of accuracy in spelling and grammar, I said that most recipients of your writing are under time pressure. As a result, business writing tends to be brief. Instead of a two to three page essay, your business writing should consist of two to three paragraphs. Each of these should be short as well. Therefore, it's imperative that you think carefully before sending someone a document or an email. Writing something short is more difficult than writing something long. One of the biggest mistakes young people in their first job make is to write the way they speak. I know your book says to do so, but that advice is intended for seasoned professionals. 
Young people should not write the way they speak, especially not to their boss. And remember that any email can, and most of the time will, be forwarded to people and groups for which it was never intended. Try for a calm, professional tone of voice in your writing. Don't use slang and don't try to be funny. It never works. Finally, most people in business are specialized in their field. For example, if you're a marketing executive writing to the CFO, Chief Financial Officer, don't expect him or her to know what an advertorial is. It is actually an advertisement that looks and reads like a news story. Explain and define it. Or, if you need to use the abbreviation B2B, gloss it by putting the meaning in parentheses. And by the way, it means business to business marketing. Thank you for listening to this mini lecture. You can play it again anytime you want. If you haven't done so already, please read chapter two in your textbook and watch the videos I have selected for this lesson.